Hey guys, good morning. All right, so in reading today, we are going to learn about something called a homograph. Can you guys say homograph? Good, homograph. And a homograph kind of sounds crazy, but a homograph are just is just a word that is spelled the same but has different meanings. For example, the word bill. A bill could be like a dollar bill or it could be like a duck's bill. It depends on what you're talking about in your sentence. If you're talking about a dollar bill, like if I said, hey, can you give me a bill? I probably mean a dollar bill, right? Not a duck's bill. But if I said, oh no, look at that duck, it's hurt its bill. It didn't hurt its dollar bill, it hurt its, its mouth, its bill. So bill is a homograph. It's just a word that's spelled the same, but it could be two different things. For example, another example, I remember the week before we went out for fall break, um, we had the word checks as a vocabulary word, and I remember Libby talking about how checks could be something different. Because in our story, checks meant that you check something and make sure it's right. But I remember Libby saying, oh yeah, a check could also be like a little piece of paper that you pay thing, that you pay for things with. And I said, yeah, Libby, that it has a multiple meaning or it has more than one meaning. So a check is one of these homographs too. Another kind of homograph is the word beat. Like you can beat on the drums or you can beat these cymbals together. And beat means hit, like if you hit the drums, you're beating on them. But beat can also mean like this, this guy here in yellow, he beat everybody else. Did that mean he hit them? No, that means he won, he won the race if you beat somebody. So beat is one of those homographs. It can mean more than one thing. It can mean you hit something and it can also mean that you win. So beat could be one of those multiple meaning words or a homograph. We're going to look at a few more of these homographs, and I bet if you think, you can probably think of some words that are homographs, and some of these might be the ones that I'm going to go over. Oh, here's a good homograph, bat. Can you think of two different kinds of bat? Yeah, definitely. A bat is something that you play baseball with, right? You hit the ball with it. But do you know the other kind of bat? Yeah, it's that animal that flies. It's a mammal that flies. They're covered in hair. They feed their babies milk. They're mammals. So good. A bat could be this thing you play baseball with, or it can be this flying animal. It depends on what I'm talking about in my sentence and what kind of bat. For example, if I said, I saw the bat in the sky, I'm probably talking about the animal, aren't I? Yes, but if I said, oh, be careful and don't hit anybody with the bat, I bet I'm talking about this kind of bat. You wouldn't hit anybody with the animal bat. That's crazy. So it depends on what kind of sentence you're talking about. You have to use context clues. We learned about context clues a few weeks ago, yeah, where we had to look at the sentence and use clues to figure it out. Well, you have to use my clues to figure which kind of bat I was talking about. Let's look at another homograph. Oh, foot. Can you think of two different kinds of foot? Hmm. Oh, one of them is like, like the ruler of the foot. Like if I measure something and it's a foot. Yeah. But I bet you know the other kind of foot. <laughs> yeah, like the part of your body that's a foot. And it depends on what kind of, what I'm talking about in my sentence of which foot I'm talking about. Like if I said... Oh, I stepped on a nail with my foot. Did you step on your nail with this kind of foot? No, you stepped on a nail with this kind of foot. Or if I said, um, I measured my book and it was a foot. Was it this kind of foot or this kind of foot? Yeah, this kind of foot. So you have to use the context clues to help you figure out which kind of homograph it is. Let's look at another one. Oh, spring. Can you think of two different kinds of spring? Hmm. Yeah, like the season spring. Yeah, like after winter comes spring. 
I bet you know the other kind of spring. Yeah, like on your trampoline, you have springs that help it bounce. So yeah, there's two different kinds of spring. It's spelled the same, but they could be two different kinds of things. So spring is one of those homographs. It's a multiple meaning word. Oh, cap. Can you think of two different kinds of cap? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Like a hat is sometimes called a cap. Like you put a cap on your head. But there's also like the cap of the toothpaste. Yeah, like you have to always put the cap on or it's going to dry out, right? Right, so there's two different kinds of cap. They're spelled the same. But it depends on which one. Like if I said, uh, can you pick up the cap off the floor and put it back on the toothpaste? Do I want to put this cap on the toothpaste or this cap on the toothpaste? <laughs> yeah, the cap that closes something. That's what a cap is. But if I said, ooh, it's cap day at school tomorrow. You need to make sure you wear a hat. Are you going to wear one of these on your head? No, you'll wear a cap, a hat. So you have to use your context clues. Oh, there's another one, park. Can you think of the two kinds of park? Yeah, one of them is like the park that you play in, right? But the other kind of park is... Yeah, like you have to park your car when you go to the store. Good, two different kinds of park. That's a homograph. They look exactly the same. But it could be two different things depending on if your mom says, hey, get ready, we're going to go to the park. Is she taking you here? No, she's going to take you to the park that you play, right? You have to use those context clues to figure out. All right, now the next couple ones that I'm going to show you are special kinds of homographs. Because they are homographs. They look exactly the same. They're, they mean different things, but they also sound different. For example... This word right here could be a bird called a dove. And that's how you say that word, dove. And it's this real pretty bird called a dove. But this word right here also is dove. Like when you dove into the water. So sometimes it's pronounced different or it's said different. Like if I'm talking about the bird, I'm going to call it a dove. But if I'm talking about, you know, jumping into the water, I'm going to say dove. It's got a sneaky E, makes it say dove. But you have to, depend on what you're talking about, you say it different. Like if I said, oh, I saw the dove or the dove flying in the sky. Would it be a dove or a dove? Yeah, the dove was flying in the sky. So you have to say it different depending on which one you're talking about. This next one's the same way. This word right here could be tear. Like when you're crying, you have a tear. But it can also be tear. It depends on which one you're talking about on how you say it. This is a tear. This is tear. It's spelled the same way. It just depends on what you're talking about. If I said, oh, please don't tear the paper, I, it's tear, and I'm going to say it like tear. But if I said, oh, I think she was crying. I saw a tear in her eye. I'm going to say to ear. So these are the special kind of homographs. They look the same, but they sound different and they mean different. That's what makes them special. All the other homographs, they always sounded the same, like bat and bat and Bill and Bill. They always sounded the same, but these are different. They are going to sound different like tear and tear. Oh, and here's another one. This word right here could be a fish called a bass. I bet you've went fishing before and you've caught a bass. But this word right here can also be pronounced bass. And a bass is like a really big, tall, kind of looks like a guitar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's this really big, tall instrument. It's almost as tall as a person. And they, you have to stand up and you pluck these strings and it makes a real deep sound. You might have even seen somebody playing one at church sometimes. So if we're talking about the thing that you play, we say bass. 
but if it's a fish that we caught, we're going to call it a bass. So depending on which one they're talking about, we say it different. It's always spelled the same way. But if I said, oh, I went fishing and caught a bass, not a bass, you wouldn't want to catch a bass fishing, would you? <laughs> That'd be silly. And you're not going to say, hey, I played a bass in church. Because you don't play a bass, that's a fish. You play a bass. It just depends on which one you are talking about. Okay? All right, so we're just going to practice figuring out which one we have. We have another homograph right here. The word is court. Mm -hmm. And you can have two different kinds of court. Like court where you have to go, like if you get in trouble for something, you might have to go to court and the judge has to tell you what, you know, what your punishment is. Or you could have court like a basketball court where you play basketball. So it says, whoops, it went ahead and showed you, didn't it? Patricia settled her speeding ticket in court. It'd be this kind of court, not the basketball court. She got in trouble for speeding, so she had to go to court. This kind of court. Let's look at another one. I'm going to try not to show you early this time. All right, so rock is a multiple meaning word. Because you could have a rock, <laughs> like one of these rocks. Or you can rock in a chair. It's two different kinds of rock. Let's read this sentence and see if we can figure out what kind of rock they're talking about. Jacob likes to rock back and forth while reading a book. Does he like to rock back and forth with this rock? Or rock back and forth with this? You're right. It's the chair rocking like a rocking chair. All right, we have another multiple meaning word or a homograph. It's called a ring. Oh, because, yeah, a ring can be this thing you wear on your finger. But a phone rings, too. So we got two different kinds of ring. Let's read the sentence and see if we can figure out which kind of ring they're talking about. Kimberly put on her ruby ring before the party. Yeah, it's the ring that you wear on your finger because it says she put it on. We can't put on this kind of ring. That's silly. Oh, we have ruler. Because a ruler could be one of these things, but a ruler is also like a king or a queen, right? King Charles was the ruler of the land. Was he this kind of ruler or this kind of ruler? Yeah, this kind of ruler means a king or a queen. We have to use our context clues to help us figure it out. All right, and then Harrison sent a letter to Lily. Because a letter could be this thing you put in the mail. Or, you know, all these are letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, these are letters. So did Harrison send her one of these letters or one of these letters? Yeah, this kind of letter. That's what's tricky about homographs. You have to use those context clues to help you figure out which one they're talking about. All right, now we've got Nevea put a bow in her hair. And bow is the multiple meaning word. I forgot to underline it, but bow because, you know, a bow could be something you put in your hair, or it could be this, you know, where you shoot the bow and the arrow. So what did Novea put in her hair? What kind of bow? <laughs> yeah, of course, this kind of bow. It would be silly to put that bow in your hair. All right, so Caden had to wind up the toy before it would work. And we have, this is one of those tricky ones. The word is wind, because when I wind something up, it's, it, we say wind. But this word can also be wind. So did Caden have to wind up the toy or he had to wind up the toy? Yeah, he had to wind up the toy. That's one of those tricky homographs because it sounds different sometimes. Sometimes we say wind. Sometimes we say wind. Just depending on what the sentence is, what we're talking about. All right, so that is the end of our homograph lesson for today. I'm going to pull up, this is what your work is going to look like, your assignment, in just a second. And what you're doing is, it reminds you what a homograph is. You know, the words that are spelled the same, but they have different meanings. And sometimes you even say them different. This is your what your assignment's going to be. We only have four. And in over here in this box, it gives you a sentence with the word. We store things in our garage. We store things in my garage, too, like my bike's in there, and the sleeping bags are in there, and the camping stuff's in there, and the lawnmower's in there. We store stuff in our garage. But there's a different kind of store. 
can you think of the other kind of store? This means like we store stuff, we put it in it, right? Like we put stuff in the garage. What's the other kind of store? Yeah, I think you know it. So you have to write a sentence using the other kind of store. This is the first kind of store. I want the other kind of store over here. Same thing with tear or tear. I'm not sure if that's tear or tear. Let's read the sentence. There was a small tear in my paper or tear in my tear in my paper would sound better, wouldn't it? You're not going to have a tear in your paper. So this one is tear. So they want you to write a sentence for tear over here because tear and tear are homographs. They sound they look the same but they sound different. Oh, and then we have well. We got drinking water from the well. Oh yeah, because a, a well can be a place where you get water. Some people have a well that their water comes from. We used to have one when I was little. We had a well. And it's just it's just like a big hole in the ground that you get your water from. Like when you take a bath or a shower or you drink some water, you get it from the well. But there's another kind of well. Can you think of what the other kind of well is? And you have to write a sentence for it. And then the last one is either going to be wind or wind. He had to wind up the little toy or he had to wind up the little toy. I bet he had to wind up the toy. That makes sense. So you need to make a sentence for wind over here. So do you kind of understand what you're doing on your assignment today? Good. And remember, though, if you have any trouble, you can always send me a message and I will help you, okay? I'll, we can video chat together and I'll help you with your work, okay? Well, all right. Good luck on your homographs and I will see you guys later.